Right, let's dive in then. Let's we'll, we'll, let's, we'll, we'll pick that up in a bit. Obviously, yeah. the tie in there. But I, I just, it's quite interesting because most of the artists I've spoke to, I said, um, "Oh, can you just give me some?" Because obviously, I don't, I, I can't spend the time doing lots of in-depth research about every artist because I can't yeah. find it, you know, in time. No. No. So I said, "Give me a list of questions you'd like to ask me," and you gave me one question, <laughs> <laughs> which was, uh, "What what got me into art?" So. I suppose we better start with what got you into art, because I have read about your history, and you've had obviously you've had some turbulent times. Yeah. Just yeah. Well, I just thought that question covers everything <laughs> and starts me off, like because it is a bit of a, a long story, I suppose. But uh, my mum, um, I'd always been surrounded by art because my mum was an artist and very creative, and so was her mum and so was her mum's sister so it was in it was in the family um so i'd always been surrounded by it and i always dabbled a bit with it but uh, as the story goes i um i messed about a bit when i left school and i wanted to go to art college but kept coming an hour in and my dad said oh i've got your job as a as a apprentice um uh fitter whatever it was, um, sheet metal worker. So I thought, oh, okay, which is what my dad used to do. And um, I thought, well, I'll do it for now. And, you know, but so of course, once you get the money and you're a young lad and you just get settled into a rut. I mean, I still dabbled with art and, and painted, but, um, and still dreamt about being an artist, but obviously at this job now, so, Went on, did the job, and 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 um, never really liked it, but I got on with it as as most people do. But then, when I was um, twenty eight, it was um, I got diagnosed with a, a brain tumor. So um, and that just changed changed everything really from from then on. It was like you know, I think I went, I went in for the. Um, operation in Manchester Royal and uh, he said oh you he said you might lose your voice your hearing your swallowing and I was devastated you know yeah. and uh, um, so I went in and uh, you know obviously I lost I lost my voice which has been fixed uh, so I can speak now it's a bit gruff but I lost my hearing and my swallowing which I've learned to cope with uh, I'm swallowing on one side but um, but what it did do was it made me focus on what I really wanted out of life, and uh, there was there was a moment where I shuffled to the window and I um, saw my reflection in the window, and just got this overwhelming feeling to 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 do something with it, to mm. write or paint or it was a really overwhelming feeling and. Um, and, and, and just from then on, I just, that's what I did. I, I used to paint in my bedroom till early hours in the, in the little in the little bedroom that we had. And um, I mean, just work, 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 went back to work eventually. Uh, but used to come home and paint in, in the bedroom, the little bit box room till the early hours teaching myself. But uh, every time I went to the hospital for a checkup, I used to go to the Whitworth Gallery. Right. And and it was always a nice end to the day. I'd go for an appointment and then I'd think, well, I'll go and have a coffee in the gallery and look at the paintings. It always made it a nice end. So so that's, and, and just the more I went, the more my passion grew and, and the more I painted and taught myself and, it just become just a passion and what I wanted to do. So, I mean, which, at which point then? I mean, that's a that's a hell of a story, really. I mean, that's a that's a real. Um, yeah. I mean, it's funny because you talk to you talk to a lot of artists and some of the people I've spoke to, and I've, I've always said, you know, what was the turning point? And there was, you know, there's all sorts of different answers, but that's a that's a, a bolt of lightning for you, I suppose. Yeah. A real sort of yeah. shift in direction. I mean, how did you? So from from there then, I mean, how did you think? Well. You know, this is something I want to do as my life, as my living. I mean, your career has been phenomenal. Um, How no. do you, you know, to, to go from 
Mm. Obviously, it's, it's, it's being a, having a passion and yeah, something telling you to do this mm. and having a, a trauma to, as a catalyst. And I get that. And that's inc- incredible that you, you know, you've got through that and what you do, but, ha- but to still get on that path and get the, the recognition that you, you've got, it's not an easy one, you know. No, no. I think um, <clears throat> I never, I never really saw it as a job. It was never going to be a job. I mean, uh, uh, at first I thought it was more therapy. Really, I could go paint, read books, um, immerse myself in the art world, and forget about what was happening and the the daily struggles with the voice and the swallowing and what have you. Um, so it was more, and it really, really helped. It was, it was some, it was like a world that I could escape to. But I never, I never saw it as, um, as it being a career. I mean, I can't, I can't, I think it, to, to make, if you're setting out to make a career out of being a painter, you put off straight away because it's so difficult. Mm. You know, there's, there's not many painters out there that it, it's, it's their main living or... Um, so I think, you know, if you think about that, it would put you off, but I didn't. It was more about the therapy um, and just escaping from this world that I was in. And just just gradually, by over the months or years, um, I started to win a few competitions and bits and bats, and and that's how it grew mm. to to a point where um, you know I think oh, I was working at British Lale and then, and um, I just it got to a point where I had to decide whether I was getting commissions coming in and I had to decide whether to stay at work or become a professional artist. I mean, that was many years down the line. I mean, by then I think I'd had three or four, three more tumours. Really? Yeah. Um, they, found, they found out it was, um, it was a very rare gene that created these multiple tumours. And uh, uh, so consequently I had, I had another three after that. Wow. Um, and still, it's still ongoing, but but I always I always go back to that that art world, and that's and keeps, that's what it keeps your brain yeah, yeah it keeps your brain ticking. Yeah, that's what it was all ever about. It was, and sometimes when in the art world it can be tough. There can be some decisions you have to make. You're not going to like, or um, you know, there's a lot of dealing with galleries or people, and and, and it's not all. You know, it's not all nice and it's a great job, but uh, what I do, but there is some, you know, tricky decisions you have to make. But I always, I always come back to that feeling of um, what it was about for me in the beginning. And it was always, it was always about the paint, the art, the seeing, the looking, the, you know, the, the joy you get from putting a brush mark on it was always, it was never about anything else. It was, you know, it was so when, always, when you made that decision then to, to leave your, um, what, British, what was it? British, uh, British, Lale, British, British Lale, yeah. Lale, yeah. You're from Croston, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, you're a proper, proper Leyland lad. Oh, oh yeah. Lancashire lad. British yeah. Leyland as well, yeah. That's classic, that is. That's the classic. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was called Leyland Trucks then. But yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but I mean, what, so what, um, because there again, like you said, it's not an easy, I think there is this myth that, you know, the art, the art life is an idyllic thing. And to some people it is, you know, so, you know, you talk to some people and they've sort of been mm. fortunate and fine, you know, whatever they've got. But I think any creative industry is a difficult fight, isn't it? So yeah. to leave a full time job and to to be going through what you've been through as well, you know, the, the turmoil with your health and everything. I mean, that's that's a brave decision to suddenly say, right, I'm going to be yeah. a full time artist. Well, what had happened? I, I think I'd got another tumour at the time, and I was I was sort of struggling with stamina as well, uh, going in every day to work. And um, 
I'm just trying to think how old I was then. It must have been, a, it was only a few years later. Um, but I just thought, and then it just, it was just the way it happened. I was just getting commissions coming in. And then I'd got this other tumour and I was struggling at work. And it was just the way it all came together. That it was kind of fate, really. And that's the way I looked at it. And it was, it was all of, it was meant to be. It was kind of telling me that, you know, this is what you've got to do. Stop messing about. Why aren't you doing it? Yeah. Get on and be an artist. That's what you wanted to do. Mm. And it, kept, it was giving me these things to say, come on, get on get with on it. it. Yeah, yeah. Stop messing about. Yeah. <laughs> stop building and, uh, ducks and start building an art life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, basically. I mean, for the first 12 months, I was like, what the heck have I done? Yeah. I was, you know, I was, um, I miss the banter as well. And I know. Yeah, I think it's, it's, a long, it's a lonely existence, I suppose, being an artist. But I suppose, I mean, I think that's what yeah. I quite like. Um, obviously, we're talking to Norman, is it, the Northern Boys uh, yeah. group that you're in. And I think that's, that's a nice thing, because at least you've got this sort of little, you know. Oh, it's been brilliant, because, because, you know. because I'd like to say I miss the banter for the first 12 months, I got used to it. But like I say, it's a lonely existence. And you do get used to it. You get used to your radio programmes and your podcasts and you, that you listen to. But the Northern Boys has been superb because, because that brought back the banter and the laugh and the camaraderie yeah. that I had when I worked in, a, in a engineering, you know. So, yeah, it was, uh, it's been a good thing that. I quite, I quite like that group because you, you're all sort of bouncing off each other, but you've all got quite distinctive styles as well. You know, you're, yeah. very, you're all very different, which is quite nice. You're not just sort of copy, you know, all doing the same thing. You know, it's a quite yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. We're all, we're all, we're all very different. So, I mean, it, you'd laugh because, like, say, if when we're in Venice or whatever, and um, I'll get up in the morning and everybody's gone because, <laughs> like. Some get up at five o'clock, right. go in, some get up at bloody three o'clock. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm a late starter, I, I get up about 8.30, have a breakfast, <laughs> have a coffee in the square. You yeah. know, I'm more of a chill painter. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're all very different. Yeah. Well, are, you, are you, I mean, obviously you do a lot of... Um, What's it called when you when you're painting actually on the on outside? Has it got a name for it? Uh, plain air, on plain air. Yeah. So I mean, do, you, do you, but you have a studio, do you, that you're working as well? Um, out and about. Yeah. Sorry. Or are you always out and about? Um, I no, I do a bit of both. So so some. Um, I wouldn't say I'm not a full time plain air painter. I'm so studio plain air. Mm -hmm. uh, but some of some of the northern boys are full full time play there. Yeah, you know they that they complete a painting on the spot, and if they don't if they don't complete it, they'll go back and work on it again oh, at, right. the same, at the same spot. Um, but I'm 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 more the other way. If I don't finish it, I'll I'll try and finish it in the studio. Right. Um, but that works for me, but we're, we're all the thing with art is when, when you're learning and when you're starting, there's nobody to there's nobody you can only find your own path. Mm. It's not it's not like you can you can read books and things, but it's only it's only by doing it and the practice of doing it that that makes you the artist you are. Mm. Because it's about putting the hours in. Yeah, you know. I mean, I I found that. I mean, I I always feel like I cheat because I I'm as somebody who's wanted to paint and I've always dabbled and I get frustrated with it. And it was yeah, it was Instagram that got me painting again. I just yeah, wanted to paint. Yeah. yeah. And how do you, do you? So when you when you're painting out outdoors, I mean, do you work from photographs when you get back, or do you just do it from your your memory, or how does that work? Um, I will. Well, now with, with phones, you can just take a little snapshot. And yeah. I'll even, I'll even come back. I will, if I bring it back to the studio, I won't. Well, I'll try not to work on it for more than 
30 minutes right to an hour because because it just it becomes a different painting right if you start messing with it and you lose the freshness that you got when you were there on the spot yeah um because when you as you know when you take a photograph you don't get the true uh, colors or the yeah. true feeling of what it was and um, so but i i do i have work i do work off photographs or i have you know in the studio yeah uh, especially for the for the large city scapes yeah i mean them large city scapes yeah. are incredible i mean that recent one you did with manchester with the taxis and that just yeah baseball that's beautiful that yeah well that the third and off my I, I work on photographs for them, or I'll do sketches. I'll, I'll but, I, but I have to go to the spot and take take the photograph. Yeah, I realised that early on that I couldn't. I found it very difficult. If somebody gave me an image, I couldn't. I couldn't connect with it. Yeah, no, I get that. I think. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm the same. I think um, for me, it's capturing the feeling of being in a place, isn't it? I mean, that's what you're. You know, I look at your paintings and your art you're in, you're in it you're in that yeah. you're in that space and i think yeah it's sort of and you catch you in the you know i mean a lot of people can you know copy a photograph and make it look it's not about copying is no, it no. Capturing. and i think you you you've captured the atmosphere which is you know yeah. to me landscape and portrait paintings but yeah you've got to capture the soul of that yeah, it's not, it's not, you were spot on, and it's not, it's not about just copying an image, and, and a lot of people can do that. It's about putting that extra something in it that makes it magical. Yeah. And um, there's a bit of a dark edge to your stuff, though. Like, I mean, I know, I mean, I don't, there again, I'm not trying to read, and, yeah. and a lot of artists have gone, well, you know, don't, I've asked them, so what's, what, what is it about, what you're trying to say in your work and yeah. obviously a lot of artists don't want to say what it is they want you to yeah. read into it and get that but yeah there's a there, there is definitely a an edge to, to it and, and especially some of the city you know the dark shadows and the yeah well, it's good yeah, it's, it's good that you pick that up because um there is I'm, i am fascinated i, I always tend to lean towards post-apocalyptic films, I suppose that tells you a lot. Uh, well, we're in a good time for that right now, aren't we? Let's <laughs> yeah. You bet you're uh, loving this then, you're loving this COVID nonsense. Oh, I'm loving it. No, no, no. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I, uh, I always used to love wandering around the city on a Sunday. Do you remember when the shops used to close? Yeah, yeah. On a Sunday. I do. I'm showing my age now. Uh, so I always used to love walking around on a Sunday when it was quiet in a city. I like that. I like that feeling of melon. Um, I like that feeling of loneliness, a melancholy feeling. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, I intentionally put that into the work. It may come. No, it's just, definitely there. I, 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 yeah. yeah. I don't put it in intentionally, that's what I'm trying to say. But it, that's, that's, that is in my personality. And I can be on my own for days, weeks at a time. I don't mind that. Mm. Um, and I can get quite melancholic, you know. Yeah. No, I, I see that, I see that in the, I see that in the, in the, in the work. And I don't, I, mm. I'm, I'm sort of, there again, I hate, I hate doing this because I don't, I don't want to be as assuming and I don't want to, be wrong either but I can definitely see it I mean it's like that when I saw like the, the guy this morning with the taxis in Manchester and mm. even though it's, it's a relatively busy scene you know mm -hmm. you can still be you can still be lonely in a crowd can't you you know to yeah. me. And you, yeah. sort, you sort of get I, I get that from you from you yeah. oh good good I'm glad yeah no, oh. I got that right but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's no. a genuine, genuine yeah thing. I always I, I mean I always liked city scapes as a kid no city cities as a kid when I was growing up yeah. um, and uh, I was always fascinated I was always intimidated by them yeah and, and but fascinated with them at the same time mm. and um, you know I just I just I, I love Manchester I think it's you know I just I like the grittiness of it I like the way it's come back from that bomb and 
you know, it's become a trendy place now and everything. Yeah. You know, I just, I just love the way it's built itself back up and that. Yeah, it's an interesting city and it's certainly an interesting city to paint. I think, you know, as Northerners, I know it's always difficult, isn't it, with Manchester? Because I think, you know, I'm a, I'm a proud Prestonian and a, yeah. you know, and I probably bang on a bit too much. And I think that, and I get, I get, I went through a phase of, you know, when off Preston, I got frustrated because nothing's happening. I'm sick. Yeah. All, all the creative brain drains getting mm. taken to Manchester. So I sort of resented Manchester as well for that. Yeah, I can understand that. But, but now yeah. I think it's 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 inspiring, and I think, like you say, as guys like us who are on the fringes, that we can dip in and absorb yeah. it and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And you definitely do. I think your work catches it beautifully, you know. Mm. Uh, yeah. Sorry, go on. Well, I think that came from visiting a lot with the hospitals and things. Because you know, sometimes I was going two or three times a week for checkups and stuff. And uh, I just, yeah, I thought I'd shy away from it, Manchester, because of that. But um, I just became to love it more and more, really. Well, you've put you've put um you've, you've put a beauty in the darkness. That sounds really cheesy, but you have. You think you've obviously when you've been going through that phase, and obviously you're still going through. It's obviously a, a very stressful, troublesome time. And I, I remember when years ago when I I damaged my back when I was eighteen, and I was in yeah. the hospital, and you get that feeling, don't you? Every time you're going back to that place, and you tend to not want to go yeah. back to that place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sort of em embraced it and mm. captured the, the places that you're going to, but you've sort of yeah. You've, well, whenever, whenever I used to go back, I would always think, Oh, I wonder what's on at the Whitworth, yeah. You know, so that whenever I went back to the hospital, I was just thinking, What was on at the Whitworth? Oh, oh, I'll go and see that Lucian Freud self portrait that they have, I love yeah. that, and then, Oh, I might, I might just go to the City Art Gallery. Uh, this time and yeah. you know, do all that. So that's why I always I used to think when I went, you yeah. know. Uh, so yeah. who, who was your influences then? If you go in looking at this art then and looking for this inspiration to get out of this turmoil that you're in, what who was who was your inspiration to get you moving forward? I suppose back then I'd have to say Hopper. Edward Hopper. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, because... Oh, now you mention it. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know he's very well known and everything. But I, I, could, I could resonate with, with his work. I, I understood it. Yeah. You know, um, and I think at that time, when I used to shuffle to this window of the hospital and at night, and my wife would come and visit and then I'd go and she'd go and I'd walk her back to the landing and then I'd look out the window and you could see down one of the streets and at night all the lights were on. Yeah, right. so I think I did a painting of it, but it just, it just, it just reminded me of Hopper. Yeah. I remember a hop, of a Hopper painting because there, was, um, there weren't many people about and I, I think I did a painting of it once with a, just a figure in a suitcase coming into the hospital under a street lamp. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Is that Norman? Yeah, it's Norman. Hang on. A picture of, of, of um, some fella with his bag for the hospital stood under a street lamp. That was probably that was one of the first, first paintings. I did, I think a fella from London bought that. It was a, yeah. I, exhibit, I exhibited it at the Harris Open in Preston and some fella from London bought it. Uh, he contacted me a few years later and he talked, he wanted to talk about it. And he said, he said, um, I couldn't believe that painting. He said, he was like, couple of hundred quid yeah. <laughs> and, and he said I was looking for a painting I couldn't find anything down in London and he said I just happened to be up here and I called in and he said and, the, and, and there was that painting and for the, for the price of it <laughs> he said you couldn't get anything for that for that type of painting in London for the for yeah. that price you know <laughs> uh, he was made up with but that 
but it was yeah i think um opera inspired in the beginning and yeah then lots of other artists as yeah. well alongside it's good yeah. to have lots of different influences i think i think that's i mean I, it's funny because I, I don't have i mean i'm a, I'm a big peter house and fan i really like yeah. him. i think he's really an engaging char character but i think you it's good to have lots of different influences yeah. and and you know try and you know do, do you find that you work you know how, how does you have you how does your work evolve then or is it is it evolving are you constantly changing because obviously i look i'd look back over your of your work and try to get a bit of a potted history of your work i mean obviously you do portraits it's not as much portraiture no no I wouldn't have a portrait artist by any means. You've done yeah. some great little portraits though, some great studies. I mean, is that yeah. something you want to do less of then? Um, no, I, I enjoy doing it. I think if I can, if I can keep them loose and you know, minimum brush strokes, I, I enjoy them. Yeah. If, I, if I'm if I'm trying to get a likeness for somebody, I don't enjoy them. Because yeah. I'm not, I'm not, um, I, being an artist, you would say, oh, you, the key thing to be an artist is to be able to draw, 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 and it is, is, you know, it's a big thing. It's one of the big things to become a great artist is to be able to draw. But there's more to it than that for me. It's more, um, yeah, if you can get a likeness, it's great, but it's more for me anyway it's more about the flick of a brush or the light or the movement or the magic in so i said i painted a friend of mine and he was sat the way he was sat i just used to love it yeah. his hands so it wasn't for that wasn't about getting a like this it was about getting a feeling of him and, and the way he sits and so yeah, I, I enjoyed doing them, but not so much. I wouldn't get into partages too. No, it's not something you'd like to do. No. And I, um, I really like the pub, the the pub paintings that you did. Yeah. You launched did a little book on that, didn't you? I like a pub. I yeah. Like what what? I take it you like a pint or two, do you? Oh, I like a pint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a pint of. Uh, Parallel. Parallel. So what, what inspired you with the pubs then? What was the, I mean, because I, I, I tried to do a series, an Instagram series on that, I've, I've lost, because I, I, I cycle a lot, and I you ride your bike all over the shop, yeah. and I cycle a lot, and I started um, noticing a lot of pubs closing, obviously now it's even worse now. Yeah, no, it's I mean, what, what, what was your concept behind the pub thing? Uh, well, yeah, um, again, when I was a kid, my granddad, he used to love a pub. He used to love a country pub. And uh, he used to come and pick us up in his Daimler. He had this old Daimler with leather seats and he used to slip off the seat. You know, they were that shiny. And he had this quadraphonic tape player in the, in the thing, massive cassette. Yeah, I remember that. Johnny Cash. And um, he'd, he'd, he'd always come and pick us up every a couple of months with my mum and dad when we were kids and he'd drive us off to a, a country pub he used to he used to love um <clears throat> the new drop in oh yeah yeah he used to love going there and he used to go there and then um, <clears throat> so so of course i grew up with it and i loved it i loved going out you know when he's dim and then of course when you get a bit older you, know, you can go to a pub and have a pint and i just I think that stuck with me, but I'm a social person as well. And I think um, I like going to a pub and having a chat. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't necessarily drink a lot at home, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, but I don't drink. Uh, I have a can every now and then in the garden when there's sun shining. But I like to have a pint in a pub and a chat. Yeah, It's more about the ambience of the country pub. I like being there wide well. Yeah, it's all really. that type of thing. Um, so I just, I just love them. I just love pubs, all the worldly ones. How would you? I mean, while we're on the pub subject, and I'm still obviously, I mean, the reason me for doing this 
starting these talks as well was because of this COVID thing. I feel I felt I had to do something. Yeah. Well. I just wanted to yeah. chat to our artists yeah. what they were doing. But yeah. how do you, have you, because obviously the pubs, the pubs have been hit and everyone's been hit with it all. And, and the, the, now we're coming sort of out of lockdown. It's a bit of a weird scenario because we're not quite fully back. And the pubs don't seem the same now. You've got to go in and be responsible. Oh. I mean, how... How has this all affected you, or has it? I mean, have you, have you, you know, a lot of the artists I've been talking to, they've been quite happy because they've been locked down and they can focus, mm -hmm. and it's not really bothered them. Mm. Uh, where have you been in all this? Um, yeah, I mean, this pandemic, nothing, nothing's really changed a lot for me, in the sense that I still go to the studio every day in the garden and work. I do a full day nine till four or whatever. Um, so in that sense, things haven't changed, but I have, I have struggled because of the pubs and that's, that's my, that's my um, escapism from being here or in the studio, whatever. On a Friday, I like to go to public friends. Yeah. And having my wife Debbie comes as well. And, and I've really, really missed that. Yeah. That's like, that's, I know it sounds daft, it's, but that, it's, that's been really hard for me because I've missed the social side of it. Yeah. And, and because, again, that, that helps me escape from other things and, you yeah. know, and what's yeah. going on. So, but fingers crossed, you know, we're hopefully going to come back, but it'll be sad to see. Some pubs close if they do, you know. Yeah. I think yeah. um, I think maybe you should do another. You should do a, another painting series of pubs or something just to keep the memories going. I think I th I, I'm with you. I'm a, I'm a I'm a I'm a pubber. I like a Friday night pint and a chat with just just talking rubbish with the folks down the pub. You know. For oh, well, I, we'll have to meet up then. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I just, I that just, sounds good to me. Yeah, and I think it's a shame because it's part of our our culture isn't it it's a big part of our culture it's a shame it's it's changing yeah well i've started a new series of um well i started before lockdown of london pubs oh. I've, done, I've done the manchester pubs um obviously there's more to go in like manchester and i'll keep dipping in and out of it but uh i thought i'll start a new series of london pubs because i'm in a gallery in london yeah well um, i was ask you about that i mean um, yeah. so Obviously, the part of the, 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 is it the Royal Society of Royal Painters or whatever? Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Down at the Mal Galleries. I mean, what's, you got, what's the gallery in London you're at? Uh, I'm in a gallery called Thompson's uh, right. in Marleybone. Right, right. So, they, so they, they've got an exhibition coming up. And they asked if I've got some work. And I said, well, I've just done this. I've just done five London pubs. If you want them, I'm starting a new series. So that they're like great, yeah. Great. So that's this is one of them here. That's great. <laughs> did you put a did you put an extra note on the end at price of it then? Since it's down in London. <laughs> well, no, no. You you make think. up for the make up for the lost hopper esque painting that you did. So yeah. who, who's this northerner putting all these notes on these paintings? <laughs> People like to see. A physical painting on the wall, and um, I was in when I when I first started. Out, I was in quite a few galleries, going to quite a few galleries because I was fresh, I suppose, new, starting out of it. But I think you only need two or three good galleries mm. to keep you going, and and I realised that you've got to build a relationship up with the gallery. Mm. And that, that's the key thing. Mm. Um, and I think that really helps. If they believe in you and you trust in them, uh, it really works. It really works well. You know. yeah, I mean, it, adds a, it add, does add a value to the work, and I get it. And I don't, I'm not against galleries at all. I said I've, sort of, mm. I've, I've got one. I'm just learning how to... Mm. I think some, I'm a painter as, as well, and I, always, I often feel some of the commissions are possibly high, but then obviously they've got to the, the run the place, they, they promote you and do all that work. Yeah. You work for it, I suppose, I get it. But yeah. 
that's just my opinion. But I, you know, I love galleries. I think sometimes you can be a little bit elitist and you feel a bit intimidated in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think they should be a bit more open. But um, yeah, yeah. I think you work down in London for you know. For a yeah, I think I think there is some elitist galleries out there. Mm. But you don't even you got to ring the bell, don't you, to get in? Yeah. And um, it's like as soon as you hear your accent, oh, yeah. northerner, <laughs> no, northerner. You can tell all Northerners in London because they take the curry in the coats, aren't they? <laughs> you know, um, That's true. The Northern boys in London, it's like, yeah, move out, Northern boys are here. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> uh, but um, I think Thompsons um, have really supported Northern artists, right? Um, in the past. Uh, which is good. It's a good gallery too. It's got a good reputation. Yeah. Um, I think Jeff Keyes had. Oh yeah, you know, that's a lot. Of Jeff Keyes. Yeah, he had some successful yeah. shows there. I think. And then, um, yeah, I think galleries are latching on to the Northern Art thing now. Perhaps. Yeah. Where Where are you on North then? Or where galleries are you put North? You say you're only in a couple of galleries. Have you got one? Oh. Yeah, Contemporary Six. Right. In uh, Manchester. Right, cool. That's a great gallery. Um, Epplestones in um, in uh, Eccleston. Right. Um, York Fine Art. Uh, so I think now I'm going to miss one out now. I'm going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll put a list of credit lists. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll um, kill them, but they mine. Yeah. No, it's, you only need a hand, well, in my opinion, you only need a handful of good galleries, really good galleries that, that pull the work in for you. Yeah. You know, and they earn, they earn the commission. Yeah. You know, and you don't mind it then, you know. So. Yeah, they put the effort in. Yeah, yeah. Not all galleries do, but you find the right ones. So this, yeah. going, going back to your work then, I mean, I met you briefly at an exhibition that we did for the Whitewell. There was a chap running an event that was for um, testicular cancer, I think. Yeah, yeah. The painting. The painting. Yeah. yeah. And we had to go and do a painting of uh, somewhere within a mile of Whitewell. I don't know whether he's done it the last few years or not. I'm not sure. Did he do it last year? No, I've only done it the one year. Right. Um, yeah, well, that must have been the year I did it, yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was good. Yeah, it was a good night, you know. You sold straight away. I didn't sell bugger up. <laughs> <laughs> I've never yeah. been out. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, um, I mean, it's a beautiful spot. It's yeah. a great spot. But that was what I was going to ask you. Sort of what, you know, obviously you sort of, you'd go through these sort of beautiful landscapes and then to your cities. Where, where, where is, where's your, you? You seem to be more comfortable in the city, but um, am I right in that? She's um, well, like I said, uh, with the landscapes, they're, they're a totally different painting to the urban. Some people like um, the landscape paintings, and some people and don't like the urban. Some people like the urban or don't like the landscape. So they are completely different paintings. The lab, most of the landscapes are done on location. Mm. They're most, they're all played out, most of them anyway. Mm. Um, if not, the, the ones I've done in the studio, sometimes they're done from studies that I've done on the spot. So they're more organic, I suppose. Mm. Um, but, and they're, they're quite enjoyable to do. Like, I'll go out, I'll find a spot, paint, go and have my lunch, have a pint, whatever, <laughs> go back, paint again, whatever. It's a different kind of work. The urban stuff's more studio based, you know, technical. Yeah. Um, but the landscapes came a bit later on, I suppose, when when I got more into art and looking at artists, I became fascinated with Constable yeah. and his work. And um, I went and saw the oil, Constable's oil sketches 
at the V&A and I was just blown away by them. They're amazing, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, was just, I was just in awe of them. And and um, they were done. They were done playing air out, outdoors, yeah. and it just it just gave me the kick to do more of them outdoors. And that that's where that came from, really. And I bought me and a mate of mine. We bought a pochard, which is the the box they used to play outdoors, the easel. And uh, we bought one. We're like, where'd you buy them from? I mean, this was years ago, and some chap was making them on the online. So we bought, I bought one, and and so that's where that, so that's where the landscapes came from, really. Yeah, um, it's a lovely, so, it's a really lovely discipline, that, and I, I yeah. I've got to try it because I'm very envious. I like the idea of going painting, having a pint, and then doing a bit more. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, I suppose it's like riding a bike. Well, yeah. You can go out and ride a bike, have a pie, I suppose. Yes. Yeah, it depends what kind of rap that bike riding you're doing, I suppose. Uh, I but, think, uh, that, what I find interesting, though, when you're painting out on the street or in, in the landscape, and the, the speed you've got to work, and how, because obviously it's changing all the time in front of your eyes. How do you, how do you, how do you keep up with it? How do you... How well, do you... The, the first... <laughs> the first um, the first paintings you do outdoors are like, I mean, you could quite easily be put off painting and never go back and paint again because they're atrocious. Painting outdoors is, is completely different to painting in the studio. It's like you're out, you're in the elements. As you say, light can change and um, cars are moving or whatever. Um, but the more you quickly learn about colour, about mark making, about decision making, and it very rapidly you get better. And 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 it, it's surprising how quick it, it, what the outdoor painting's done for me is it's helped the studio work. Mm. I couldn't I think the studio work would have come, become quite static or still or whatever um, if it wasn't for doing the outdoor work. I like to mix them both. So it, it, coming back from working outdoors and into the studio it gives you a freshness again. Mm. Decision making quicker. Um, put that mark down. If, if you're working in the studio, all the time, it's very easy to slow right down, mm. think about what you're doing, and then it becomes quite static, mm. and there's no feeling in it. And that, I've battled with that with the urban stuff. I battle with that feeling, mm. and I've always tried to bring that painting outdoor work in. Do try and do it in the studio get the same feeling it's not easy but for me i found that doing both really works yeah um but i couldn't do i couldn't do just one no you need to yeah it just i can't I, for one i haven't got the stamina to work outdoors i think that's come with my illness i mean some artists wow they can really day in day out <laughs> yeah um, Peter Brown's one is incredible. Um, I met met a man, Rob Rob Point, and he's it's like a machine. He can, he, I don't know where he gets his stamina from. Yeah. Um, but you know we're all different, and we all work in different ways. So it's whatever, whatever suits. Yeah. Suits so where, where do you see your work going from here? Then, what's your, Have you got a Have you got a path or how? Do you, or you think, right, I'm, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at now, I'll just, you know, or yours, where do you think you're going to progress to, or if anywhere? I think uh, I like it when an artist is, is progressing. You know, I think that's the key to being, being a good artist. Um, you know, always tweaking your work, trying different things. It's easy to get stuck on, I know I, I do urban stuff, 
but I do tweak it and I'm doing little things all the time that alter it. Oh, I'm always trying to be better. Mm. I'm always I'm always trying to make the next painting better than the last. And um uh you know it's I don't know, it's it's not easy, but you know, I think if you can do that, it gives you it gives you um a direction as well. Yeah, you know, to go in, you know, but uh, uh yeah, I mean the main thing is if you is to enjoy it. Yeah. You know, and not be I think for me, like I said when I started, I never thought of it being a career. Mm. And it, I just wanted to be a, a good artist. Yeah. And 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 that's why I've always tried to remember and just and just go for the longevity. I think there's a lot of artists that maybe you know can do or quick paintings or whatever and they sell a bit of it but i did try that for a while not very long but it just wasn't for me it's, it was always about the quality the longevity and just being the best artist you can be mm. and and if you can do that everything else around you looks after itself Mm. The money, the finance, the the notoriety, the whatever, it will come if you focus on them things and just make sure it's the best work you can do with with authenticity. Mm. Then everything else will look after itself. Once you start deviating from that, thinking I need to do this, or I need to paint like this, or the then it doesn't become original yeah. from, from you. Yeah, no, I can see that. I can see you've done that and you've done it extremely well. And oh, thank I'll, carry you. On, I'll carry on doing that for many years to come. I want to see how it progresses and where it goes. <laughs> oh, thanks, Andy. And we'll, we'll have to meet up for that pint for sure. Oh, definitely. Just let me know and I think uh, we'll get together uh, Bob into town and come and have a look at the studio and see what Oh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, well, you're welcome here anytime. Well, that'd be come. great. I'd love to see your studio, definitely. We'll have a brew and... Uh, Lovely. Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Well, nice talking to you. No, thanks, Andy. Thanks for giving up your time. All right. Yeah, cheers, appreciate it. All right, take care. Cheers, mate. Cheers, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>